mortality rate is higher for folks with hypertension, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, chronic respiratory disease, and cancer relative to folks without any of these conditions. And of course, a lot of the elderly typically have one or more of these conditions, so it's not surprising that they go hand in hand. Now, although the COVID-19 pandemic is still ongoing, the good news is that in China and also in South Korea, the number of new cases per day has dropped off, largely due to the aggressive public health measures like quarantining, aggressive testing, and ensuring hospitals have the right equipment and staffing. Based on the current data, over 80% of the patients with COVID-19 have a mild infection, and some people don't develop any symptoms at all. For others, they can develop symptoms that can range from pretty mild, like fever, cough, and shortness of breath, all the way to serious problems, like pneumonia. Severe lung damage can cause acute respiratory distress syndrome, or ARDS, which occurs when the lung inflammation is so severe that fluid builds up around and within the lungs. The severe infection can cause septic shock, which happens when the blood pressure falls dramatically and the body's organs are starved for oxygen. ARDS and shock are the main cause of death for people with the infection. And again, this is most likely to occur in those over the age of 60, smokers, and people with other medical conditions like heart disease. In addition to causing disease, coronaviruses can spread quickly. Usually, the virus spreads when people cough or sneeze, and tiny droplets containing the virus are released. These droplets can land on another person's mouth, nose, or eyes, and that allows the virus to enter a new person. When a person with COVID-19 travels to a non-affected area, this is called an imported case. If they start spreading the disease to household contacts and those around them, it's called local transmission, since it's usually isolated to a small area and can be easily traced back to the original person. However, when people begin to contract the disease without a clear source, it's called community transmission. To prevent or contain community transmission, some schools and businesses have shut down and some conferences, sporting events, and other large gatherings have been postponed or canceled. Once a person is infected, symptoms develop about five days later. This is called the incubation period. Now, there's debate about how much asymptomatic or pre-symptomatic people, which is to say folks that are in the incubation period, are spreading the disease. And it may be much more than what we originally thought. Viruses are given a reproductive number, or R0, based on how quickly they spread. And person-to-person -person transmission has been confirmed both in and outside of China. An R0 of 1 means that an infected person passes it on to one new person. An R0 of 2 means that one person spreads it to two new people, and so forth. If the R0 is below 1, the infection peters out. If it's at 1, it stays steady. And if it's above one, then it continues to spread. The current estimate for COVID-19 is an R0 of 2.2. As a point of comparison, the R0 of the flu virus is about 1.3. So COVID-19 spreads quite a bit more easily. To confirm the diagnosis, a reverse transcription polymerase chain reaction, or RT-PCR test, can be done, which can detect very small amounts of viral RNA. It's worth mentioning, however, that early in the disease, the RT-PCR can often miss the infection altogether, meaning that it's not very sensitive. So, if severe pulmonary disease is suspected, a chest CT should also be done to help detect the presence of viral pneumonia. It's also important to look for other causes of similar symptoms, by doing things, for example, like a quick flu test or a respiratory viral panel to look for alternative causes of the symptoms. Treatment is focused on supportive care, such as providing fluids, oxygen, and ventilatory support for really ill people. There's also early data showing that remdesivir, an antiviral drug pneumonia. previously it's used against Ebola, it's also important to look for other helpful. causes of similar and symptoms it's being tested by doing large things, for example, like a trials in the test, U.S. or a respiratory viral Unfortunately, panel to look there's for no alternative causes available to protect against COVID-19. 
Having said that, there treatment are some is being researched, including care, one that is in providing clinical fluids, trials, oxygen, and will likely and ventilatory be ready by 2021. For really Ill people. There's also so early data the main goal showing that remdesivir avoid persons and antiviral medication. Previously it's used areas for the community for health causes of and similar symptoms being tested symptoms by doing various scale when they like trials in the US or respiratory virus unfortunately to wear a mask and they should self quarantine within their home. If those symptoms worsen, they should call their clinic or use telemedicine to talk to a clinician. For people with symptoms that live with others or even with pets, they should self-quarantine in a separate room and use a separate bathroom if possible. And they should avoid sharing household items like bedding or eating utensils. In fact, there has been a confirmed case of human to dog transmission where COVID-19 went from a person to their pet dog. However, the dog didn't get sick and there's no evidence that pets can spread this disease or become sick. So it's not necessary to take measures against companion animals. Finally, anyone with symptoms, including children and younger adults, should not attend school, work, or any other in-person gathering, and should avoid travel. Now, for individuals that don't have symptoms but are at higher risk, like those over age 60 and people with a chronic disease, the recommendation is that they also self-quarantine to avoid the chance of getting sick. Self-quarantining requires keeping a few weeks supply of your medications, groceries, and household items, as well as having an emergency contact person. Coronaviruses don't usually spread over long distances in the air, but they can get flung from one person to another on tiny droplets of saliva when someone's coughing or sneezing. In addition, some strains of coronavirus can survive on surfaces for over a day. With that in mind, if you're a healthy person living in a non-outbreak area, the recommendation is to avoid travel to disease outbreak areas, generally stay away from crowded places, and stay at least six feet or two meters away from anyone with symptoms. Wearing a surgical mask is not recommended because they're meant to catch droplets from a cough or sneeze going out rather than preventing you from breathing in the virus. Similarly, wearing an N95 mask is not recommended because they're only meant to be worn by healthcare workers. In addition, cleaning and sterilizing frequently touched surfaces like toilet seats, door handles, phones, and keyboards is also a good idea. As always, careful hand washing is key, and it should be done with soap or alcohol-based hand sanitizers and scrubbing for 20 seconds. Also, avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. This is the area known as your T-zone, it's a common entry point for viruses into the body. For healthcare workers who are around people with COVID-19, the recommendation is to apply droplet and contact precautions. That includes wearing personal protective equipment like a clean, dry surgical mask, gloves, long-sleeved gowns, and eye protections like goggles or a face shield. When performing a procedure that generates aerosol, like tracheal intubation, bronchoscopy, CPR, or non-invasive ventilation, it's important to wear an N95 respirator. This prevents 95% of the small particles, like respiratory droplets, from passing through. All right, as a quick recap. The SARS-CoV-2 virus causes COVID-19. The virus travels in respiratory droplets and enters the body via the mouth, nose, or eyes. It can cause symptoms like fever, cough, and shortness of breath. And in some people, it can progress to more dangerous complications like pneumonia, ARDS, and shock. The highest risk is among the elderly and those with other serious health conditions. Treatments are focused on supportive care, but medications like remdesivir are in clinical trials, and there's a vaccine in clinical trials as well that will likely be ready by 2021. In the meantime, the best strategy is prevention. This includes careful hand washing, avoiding traveling to disease outbreak areas and crowded places when possible, avoiding touching your T-zone, and if you're a healthcare worker, using personal protective equipment.
Hello, I'm TARD's Mayor Pat Fury. On behalf of my colleagues on the City Council and all of our hardworking city staff, I want to assure you that we are working diligently to monitor the coronavirus and updates from the CDC with the importance of your health and wellness as our top priority. We are working with county, state, and national agencies to monitor this global pandemic. We are also working closely with our local hospitals and area schools. I want to assure you that Torrance's tap water is safe. It's tested daily and meets all federal standards and remains a viable resource for our community. And there is no need for panic buying. We are advised that there is no shortage of food or paper supplies. Grocery stores and pharmacies are restocking as fast as they can. And while there have been disruptions to some city services, we are focused on your health and safety. And we want to thank our first responders and medical professionals for continuing to do their best in keeping our community safe, especially during these uncertain times. On Friday, March 13th, the city declared a local state of emergency. As disappointed as we all are, the city has taken these extra precautions by canceling city programs, meetings and events, temporarily closing all facilities like libraries and senior centers, as well as all public counters. It is critical that we all do our part to help reduce the transmission of COVID-19. We ask you that you do your part as well by avoiding crowds and practicing social distancing. We ask that you take action consistent with California Governor Gavin Newsom's direction that those 65 and older self-isolate. And if you or someone you know close to you exhibit symptoms, you should isolate at home to help contain the spread of this virus. And remember to please practice good hygiene. Staff is assessing the situation daily and continuing to monitor COVID-19 and its effect on the public and provide regular updates through the city websites and social media. Today, we held a special meeting of the Tarn City Council where we concurred with the city manager's declaration of a state of public health emergency. And we support his decision to order all restaurants to temporarily close for public dining and only allow takeout and delivery options. Bowling alleys, gyms, movie theaters, and bars will be mandated to temporarily close until further notice. But we are working with all of our businesses to provide options for continued operation to lessen the adverse impacts. We need to take these steps to protect our residents, businesses, and the city. We ask that you all stay informed and sign up for Torrance Alerts as we send out notifications daily at 4 p.m. Go to torrentca.gov alerts. Follow us on social media, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and go to our temporary website, cityoftarnca.com. We recognize that these significant precautions and steps are necessary to help prevent the spread of this virus. While these are difficult times, we will do what we do best and overcome. We are confident that we will get through this together. In Tarns, we always do. Please take care of yourself. Stay safe and healthy. Washing your hands is one of the most effective ways to protect yourself from getting sick, but you have to do it regularly and correctly. Use soap and water. Wet your hands with clean running water. Warm or cold, either one is fine. You can use bar soap or liquid soap. It does not have to be antibacterial. Just plain soap and water will do the trick. If you don't have soap and water, use alcohol-based hand sanitizer that contains at least 60% alcohol. These kill most types of germs, but may not kill certain bacteria and viruses that cause diarrhea. So always wash your hands before eating and after using the bathroom. Scrub your hands for at least 20 seconds. That's about the length of time it takes you to sing the ABC song once or the happy birthday song twice. Scrub the front of your hands, the back of your hands, in between your fingers and under your fingernails. Rinse well under clean running water and dry with a clean towel 
or you can air dry. You should be washing your hands about seven to 10 times a day, especially during these key activities. Before preparing meals, before eating, after using the restroom, after coughing, sneezing, or blowing your nose. Routine hand washing is one of the easiest ways to keep you healthy and singing all year round. A queen. Okay, it's coronavirus, it's social distancing, it's e-learning, e-working, it's spending more time at home with our family. Uh, you know, there's a reality to this and a lot of us are either already experiencing cabin fever or are soon to be experiencing cabin fever. And so what does psychology tell us about some things that we can do around that? One, draw up a family contract. Sit down together, even with your teenagers, and draw up a family contract. What do we think are going to be the major challenges that we are going to face? What are the roles that we expect people to play or would hope that people would play over the next few weeks during this difficult time? What are the strengths that each family member brings? What are the strengths that you have as a parent? Are you very organized? Are you very patient? Do you have the strength of forgiveness? What are the things that you can bring in to the family contract? And let's just set a goal. I think it's really beneficial to stick to routine as much as possible. And I know that our routines are really, really disrupted right now, but stick to the routine as much as you can. Routines give us a sense of safety. They give us a sense of predictability. They help with the anxiety of your children. And they also just help you as mum or dad to get things done. And then the third thing that I would say um, is create zones in your home. So if you are working from home a lot more at the moment because of social distancing or because of family lockdown or e Learning, then create a workstation. You know, this is where you're going to do your schoolwork during the day. And this is where I will do my work during the day. This is where we're going to play, have our games, our jigsaw puzzles. This is the electronics area of the house. So this is where we get on our devices. This is a little like chill out zone in the house. So creating zones in your house, you'll be surprised at how that's such a small and easy thing to do. But what it's going to do is reduce that feeling of cabin fever because we have different areas of the house where we go to for different functions. We're not all underneath our feet and we're not all kind of feeling bored just sitting on the couch all day watching Netflix. No, we're doing different things in different areas of the house. So there are three things that I would suggest would help with cabin fever, the family contract, keeping to your routine and creating zones in the family home. Hi everyone. I'm Tarn's Mayor Pat Fury. As you can see, I'm doing my part in social distancing. I'm actually recording this from my home, and that's because I want to stay engaged with all of you in our community, but I also want to be safe and protect myself and others. I encourage you to do the same. I want you to know the city is working diligently to protect its residents and business community, even if it means making some very tough decisions. City staff is working around the clock, swiftly adapting to the ever-changing health crisis. And you can find all that information on the city's special website, cityoftarnca.com. I really have to thank our city staff, first responders, and local medical professionals for all they have done and continue to do to protect the health of all of us. I want to assure you that with their help, we are doing everything we can to reduce the threat of the coronavirus health emergency. You can find all the information you need to know regarding local impacts, whether you're a resident, business owner, or employee in Tarns. Stay informed and check out the information available online. Go to cityoftarnca.com. Stay safe, be well, and know that we will get through this together. Please take care. Hello, I'm Councilman George Chen. I am at home practicing social distancing. Social distancing is as hard as it sounds. 
I miss seeing all of you at the city events, shaking your get essential needs and there are other folks around you. Please leave a distance of at least six feet and wash your hands frequently. While I may be healthy, I do not want to jeopardize or compromise the health of the very young and the elderly, nor do I want to compromise the health of those who have weakened immune systems. Thank goodness to technology, we can still stay connected from a distance with FaceTime, Skype, or Zoom. Now take care of yourself and your loved ones. Remember, it is safer at home and I will see you soon. Hi, I'm Councilman Jeff Rizzo. I wanna thank our first responders, our medical community, and all those who have had an essential job during this health crisis who show up every day putting their lives at risk for our safety. The Torrance Transit System is also one of those essential resources for our community. Torrance Transit helps get tens of thousands of people to their jobs, to their families, to the doctor's offices, to the grocery stores, and get them almost anywhere they need to go. Staff has had to make some tough decisions recently, but in an effort to reduce the transmission of COVID-19, Transit has temporarily modified the schedule to mirror Saturday's bus schedule every day of the week, at least for now. And to further safeguard our riders and drivers, we've implemented new safety protocols. I assure you, we are taking extra precautions to ensure the safety of our riders by cleaning more frequently and following County Health Department guidelines. We ask that our riders respect others by abiding by safe social distancing, even when taking public transportation. I invite you to check out their website, transit.torrentca.gov or their bus app. Please stay safe during these uncertain times. Know that we're doing everything we can to support our Torrance community. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Aurelio Matucci. I'm one of your council members here in the city of Torrance. Uh, during this uh, health crisis, uh, we wanna make sure that all of our residents and business owners are up to date on information. Uh, the coronavirus is a worldwide uh, pandemic. And um, of course here in Torrance, we're trying to do everything possible to keep everybody safe and calm. Uh, for uh, alerts, we have a, a very good system called Torrance Alerts. You can go to torrentesca.gov forward slash Torrance Alerts. You can sign up with your uh, phone number or email, and uh, you can also choose what types of notifications you wish to get. So I encourage everybody to do that, and uh, please stay calm, and um, we're going to get through this. God bless you guys. Hi, everyone. This is Councilman Mike Griffiths. Hope you're all doing well during these challenging times. I want to take a moment to thank our city manager, our city staff, and my colleagues on the city council for everything they're doing to help manage us through these challenging days. This is a temporary situation, and with your help and cooperation, we'll all get through this together. Want to make sure you're aware that all required, all non-essential businesses are now required to be closed. And that goes from our flower shops, gyms, movie theaters, all the way to the Delamo Fashion Center now, unfortunately, are all closed. But there are still many businesses in our community that are open to serve your needs, including our grocery stores, our healthcare industry, and our restaurants. We all still need to eat, and our restaurants are still there for us. Although we cannot dine in, they're available for takeout and delivery. Please continue to support our local businesses, especially our, our local restaurants. Our Economic Development Department is open to help all of our businesses please reach out to our Economic Development Office if you have any questions or need any information or possible information on assistance from our state and federal government. We have a special website set up for information related to this COVID-19 situation and all the changes that we're making here in the city. Please visit that website. It's at cityoftorrentesca.com. That's a different website than our normal city website. It's special set up just for information related to this situation. So you can find all the information in one location. There's also a special email address that's been set up for our businesses. If they have questions and want to email our economic development department, that email address is businesstorrentsca at gmail.com. Please use that website and that email address for any latest information about how we're managing through this situation together, 
and we want to make sure as best possible we can continue to support our small businesses. Please take a moment and enjoy the services of our restaurants. Call them up, dine with them today. I know I've been taking advantage of many of the specials that our restaurants have been offering throughout this process. We encourage you to do so. We want to make sure our small businesses are still here when this is all over. I thank you for all your support and your patience, and I look forward to seeing you all soon. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Tim Goodrich, council member in the city of Torrance. During a time like this, I'm truly thankful to live in a city where basic resources like our water supply are safe and reliable. In case there were any concerns you had, I want to assure you, your tap water is safe from the coronavirus. Daily tests are done and safeguards are taken to protect our water quality from viruses, including COVID-19. We meet or exceed all state and federal guidelines, so there's no need for plastic water bottles. So let's be kind to our environment, let's refill our reusable water bottles, and let's cheer to a safer, healthier, and more stable future. As we practice social distancing, I'm happy we can at least connect this way. I look forward to seeing you soon. Hello, I'm Councilman Milton Herring. I know these times are very stressful and filled with anxiety. And many of you have questions about whether or not there will be essentials to make it through the week, toilet paper, water, things like that. But I want to assure you that there's no need for, for panic buying. Our supply chain is strong. Grocery shelves are being restocked daily. And we will have what we need in times like these. But what we need people to do is not be fearful, come together, be kind to one another, be patient. Tough times don't last, tough people do. And we are tough and we are resilient. We will bounce back and we will come out of this stronger than ever before. I'm praying for our nation, for our city, and for you. Together, we will be Engine 91, rescue 91, difficulty breathing, 1701 Crenshaw Boulevard. Hi, I'm Jin Chun. During this coronavirus health crisis, we want to ensure you get the latest updates impacting the Torrance community. We hope you'll join us daily as COVID-19 Today brings you the most up-to-date information to keep you and your family safe, healthy, and informed. COVID-19 Today is live at 4 p.m. during the weekday, and we'll kick off the weekends together beginning Fridays at 2 p.m. 
City staff are working around the clock to ensure the safety of our community for our businesses and for our residents. You'll get updates on each 24-hour operational period, which includes new developments impacting our city. Join us here on Torrance City Cable. Welcome home. Hi, everyone. I'm Torrance Mayor Pat Fury. I hope you're all safe and well. I want you to know that I've never been proud of being your mayor. Your cooperation and understanding during this unprecedented pandemic has been nothing less than fantastic. And we're all grateful for the hard work of our first responders and the medical professionals in our community, putting their health on the line for all of us. It is amazing how technology is able to bring us together like this. My colleagues and I participated in what was a first for us. We were able to conduct city business by having a live city council meeting with video virtually and City Cable was able to broadcast a meeting for us. This allowed us to have a public meeting while practicing social distancing. It just shows you, no matter the circumstance, if there is a will, there is a way. As I shared during the meeting, I, along with my colleagues, applaud our city staff for quickly identifying our needs and finding solutions. They are truly the glue that keeps the city together and moving ahead. I want you to know we're all doing everything we can to reduce the threat of spreading the coronavirus. I want to thank our local businesses for doing their part by temporarily modifying how they operate, even if it meant for some shutting down temporarily. I think everyone understands now this is truly the best way to protect you, your loved ones, and your neighbors. You can find just about everything you need to know about the COVID-19 pandemic, and you can see our council agendas along with all city news at cityoftarnca.com. Tarns cares, and we will get through these tough times together. We always do. Stay safe and healthy. I'm sure I'll see you soon. In the meantime, please take care. Thank you. Hello, I'm Councilman George Chen. As the news of the coronavirus global pandemic continues to unfold, here in Torrance, we are continuing to take precautions to not only protect our staff, but to protect our community and its residents. In an effort to stop the spread of the virus, we've had to make some tough decisions recently. The Madrona Marsh and Nature Center and all city playgrounds, exercise equipment and courts at all parks across the town are temporarily closed. And I repeat, temporarily closed. We've also canceled all spring classes and events at the Torrance Cultural Arts Center. We post a signage to help keep community informed. If you pay for a class, you will get a refund or you can apply it to a future class. As I mentioned before, practicing social distancing is harder than it seems. This means resisting the urge to go to the playgrounds or to the beach or places others might gather. We hope to reopen many of our facilities soon. But in the meantime, Take care of yourself and those around you. And remember, you're safer at home and Torrance cares. I hope to see you all soon. Hey Torrance, Councilman Mike Griffiths here. Wanted to share some great news with you. Our Torrance Certified Farmers Market has been reopened. The market on Tuesdays and Saturdays from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. at Wilson Park has now been reopened with some new guidelines. The farmer's booths are now spaced further apart to provide for better social distancing. And we have a controlled entry so that we don't have too many people in the market at any one time to ensure a safe environment for everyone. This is no different than what's being done at most of our large grocery stores in town, where we limit the entry to the stores. But the benefit of our farmer's market is you get the benefit of all the wonderful produce that our farmers bring to us every week, the fruits and vegetables that you've come to expect. Let's support our farmers. Let's come out and enjoy our farmer's market. Enjoy the beautiful day like today. Get out, get some fresh air, support our farmers at the farmer's market. Our staff and the farmers have worked hard to bring it back for you. Look forward to seeing you there soon. And thank you all for your patience through this challenging time. See you soon. Bye-bye.
Hi, I'm Council Member Tim Goodridge. We've had to make some difficult decisions recently, impacting our local economy, our business community, and our residents in an effort to practice social distancing. As you've undoubtedly heard, restaurants have had to stop dine-in service, some shutting down temporarily, while others are offering takeout or drive through options only. I'm truly thankful to all the businesses making modifications in order to still serve our community. It's comforting to know I can still go to some of my favorite restaurants to pick up meals, all the while supporting our local economy. Our downtown tourist restaurants, along with hundreds of establishments across our city are doing a fantastic job, keeping up with takeout orders, offering discounts, and some even offering free delivery to show that Torrance cares. I encourage you to dine locally, take the night off from cooking, and order takeout and enjoy some great local food. Hello, I'm Councilman Aurelia Matucci. As news continues to develop around the coronavirus public health crisis, it's astonishing to see how fast the information is changing globally, nationally, regionally, and even here locally. We are updated daily, sometimes even hourly by city staff. In an effort to communicate all of the latest updates and changes happening in our city to all of you at home, I'm excited to share that Torrance City Cable is launching a new program called COVID-19 Today. It's a daily live broadcast with familiar faces from Torrance City Cable. Viewers will get the updates from each 24-hour operational period, including new developments impacting our city. I encourage you to tune in daily at 4 p.m. during the weekdays at 2 p.m. during the weekends. Stay safe, stay informed, and I'll see you all soon. Councilman Jeff Rizzo. As a former member of the Torrance Police Department, I'm truly proud of our first responders, our police and fire departments, our doctors and nurses, and all those who are on the front lines every day. I applaud each and every one of you. During the COVID-19 pandemic, our first responders have modified some of their procedures when responding to an emergency, protecting not only our personnel, but the community as well. To practice social distancing, some of our police units will only have one officer to a vehicle. Although you may see more units arrive on the scene, there will most likely be the regular number of officers. We want you to know that more police cars do not reflect the significance of the call. They are doing everything they can to do their job safely to protect themselves as well as the community they are serving. Thank you for your continued support. They truly are heroes among us. Please stay safe during these uncertain times. Know that because Torrance cares, we are doing everything we can to support our Torrance community to ensure everyone's safety. Thank you.
By now, you've probably heard of COVID-19, or coronavirus disease discovered in 2019, which is responsible for a global pandemic. COVID-19 is caused by SARS-CoV-2, or Severely Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2, because it's genetically similar to the SARS coronavirus, which was responsible for the SARS outbreak in 2002. Now, coronaviruses that circulate among humans are typically benign, and they cause about a quarter of all common cold illnesses. In COVID-19, what happened is that there was a coronavirus circulating among bats, which are a natural animal reservoir, and it mutated just enough to start infecting an intermediate host, the pangolin, an animal that looks like a cross between an anteater and an armadillo. In late 2019, the coronavirus mutated again and started causing disease in humans. The outbreak began in China, but has since spread around the world. As of March 9, 2020, or roughly three months into the outbreak, there have been 109,578 confirmed cases of COVID-19 and 3,809 deaths, resulting in a fatality rate of 3.5%. But that represents an average across different countries and time frames. Based on a large study in China, digging deeper reveals that the fatality rate in China was actually 16% for cases between January 1st and January 10th. But then it fell steadily over time until it was only 0.8% for patients with symptom onset after February 1st. There are two main reasons for this. First, the hospitals and clinics were initially overwhelmed and couldn't manage the disease. So both patients and healthcare providers were getting severely ill and dying. But within a few weeks, with better equipment, testing, and processes in place, the healthcare system responded and brought down the fatality rate dramatically. Now, as a point of comparison, the flu typically causes a fatality rate of 0.1%. So, even based on this data, COVID-19 is still 8 to 35 times more deadly than the flu. It's also worth pointing out that for COVID-19, the mortality rates differ by group. So, for example, if you split things out by age, you can see from this table that fatality rate is relatively low if you're below 60, with no deaths seen in children 9 and younger. But then it starts to really climb up for the elderly so they're really the ones at highest risk. Similarly, the fatality rate is higher for folks with hypertension, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, chronic respiratory disease, and cancer, relative to folks without any of these conditions. And of course, a lot of the elderly typically have one or more of these conditions, so it's not surprising that they go hand in hand. Now, although the COVID-19 pandemic is still ongoing, the good news is that in China, and also in South Korea, the number of new cases per day has dropped off, largely due to the aggressive public health measures like quarantining, aggressive testing, and ensuring hospitals have the right equipment and staffing. Based on the current data, over 80% of the patients with COVID-19 have a mild infection, and some people don't develop any symptoms at all. For others, they can develop symptoms that can range from pretty mild, like fever, cough, and shortness of breath, all the way to serious problems like pneumonia.
as well as confirm your passcode. Thank you for joining Global Meet. When you hear the tone, you will be the 13th person to join the meeting. Fine, but uh, I'll hide my video. Uh, okay. Can we activate what's the video? Hey, Council. The decal all on or on may need to be promoted to the panelist. We are all panelists. It's just the video that has to be activated. The bottom, start video. Send the screen. Okay. I'm going to run up. Thanks. Now we have Councilman Perry. We have video. So Ron, as the host, I think you can go through on the panelists and request them to start their videos. Hi, this is Joe in the call center. Uh, extension 2870, that's Rebecca. Yes. Thank you. Okay, I'm doing that now, Cindy. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Great. Hi, it's Jill again. Extension 5762 is cable. Correct. Who's calling 5762? 5762, that's the city cable office. Jill, uh, this is Katie. I believe that that is the case. Yes. Thank you. Extension 5817 is who, please? Patrick. Thank you. Uh, 310-678-0442. Who's that? Chief Turner. Thank you. Uh, I, now I have a seven eight one five seven six two. Is that also city cable, or is that someone else? Yo, this is Katie. Let me look it up on ten. Okay. Yeah, there was a six one eight five seven six two. I know that's city cable, but this is seven eight one five seven six two. I believe that is city cable. I can't confirm, but I believe that is. I'll send Michael a text. Okay, I'll put it. I'll leave it for now. Uh, 310-961-0554. Who is that, please? Three one zero nine six one zero five five four. Whose phone is that, please? So this is Katie. I don't have that number in my in my phone. I'm not sure who that belongs to. Okay, and then I have four two four four zero four. I'm sorry, four two four four zero four three eight eight zero. It's it's me. I'm using my cell phone with the earpiece. That made I think the sound's better that way. 
Thank you, Councilman Finn. Katie, can you run the Facebook feed from yours? I don't have the option. Okay. And then I have someone dialed in from 5880 that's not identified. Is there someone else on the city manager's office that's dialed in besides is that Leroy? Maybe Leroy. Councilman Griffin. Ray Viet. I have Councilman Patrick, Rebecca, Chief Serna, John Jones, Leo Jackson, Viet on the attendee side. Okay. Um, Leroy, are you on the line? Yeah, 7509. Okay. 6509, I guess it is. We may show as a 5800 to on the main line. Yeah. All right, and then still trying to figure out 310. Nine six one zero five five four. All right, now I have two from five eight eight oh. That's PM's office. Mic check one, mic check two. Loud and clear, Councilman. Okay. Great. Good job. Thank you. Um, no echo. Councilman Rizzo, can you please give us a test? Can you hear me now? Testing one, two. Testing Thank you. one. Councilman Griffith, can you give us a test, please? Yes, I just joined. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Thank you. Are you dialed in from uh, an office line? or your no, cell phone. Cell phone. Is it 5522? Yes. Thank you. Yes, sir. We hear you. What's the, pass What's the password? Password for what? The, uh, password. Um, password for the uh, Zoom meeting. Just copy and paste the link. It should put you in. I, I, I can't. For Zoom? It's reading my yeah, password today, Eric. No, you just Eric, you I sent you a link. Yeah. Eric, I sent you an email. Can you send to my Gmail account? Sure. Yeah, because I can't pull it up. I don't, have, <laughs> I don't have Torn CA on my uh, iPad. That's not the What's idea. The, which is your Gmail account, Eric? Sorry. E, e, Eric E. Clow at gmail.com. Eric E. Clow. Oh, well, Mr. Katie, I'll, I'll take care of it. I'll forward it to him. I already sent one to Steve Berg that way. Thank you, Katie. Appreciate it. Eric, is I your phone you, uh, end in 7041? That is correct. Thank you. Ralph, can you hear me? Okay, Michael. Councilman Matucci, can you give me a test, please? 
testing mic. One, two, one, two, testing mic. Thank you. Who's Susan Gonzalez? She's the recording secretary. Last time the video didn't work for her. She needs to get the feed. Video feed? No, she doesn't need the video feed, just the, uh, I think just the um, audio. Has she called in? I'll call her. Hold on. I'll call her and tell her not Thank to. Thank you. She needs to call in. Thanks. Cool. Mayor, can you tell me what number you've dialed in from? Yeah, uh, 9610554. Thank you. Somebody is looking for a sound check from me. Hello? Yes, sir. Jill was. Michael, Jill? Yes. Councilman Goodrich, can you just um, increase your volume on your on your phone unless you're planning on leaning into it just as you just did? And can we get a sound check from you now? Let me see if I can bring this closer. This is the problem last time, too, is it's just I was having to like lean off screen in order for this thing to pick me up. 
Is Kevin around? Can we get a longer extension cord? The or phone is right next to his um, yeah, right computer next. around. Am I still quiet? A We're little okay. bit. You might just have to project a little bit. Okay. Well, I guess this is as good as it's getting. Who's still on a just left. Yeah. Are we going to close are we gonna wrap the call once the meeting starts? Yep. Just had a moment here. For a Google Meet alum? Yes. We haven't shared the phone number outside of staff. Okay. Well, John Jones? Okay, 1102 called again. No, I've created it. Was it. John Jones? Okay. I'll update the name. Thank yes, you. John Jones, sorry. I got knocked off. What happened, John? I, I, I went to hit mute and I hit cancel. <laughs> okay, good. So it's operator. Operator error. It, the operator error. My bad. <laughs> Thank you. We just want to make sure the system is reliable. Oh, yeah, no, it is. But the operator isn't. then you might want some time to do that if people start calling in on the earlier side. Um, we can manage everyone who's in the global meet, so so I can I can or the call center can automatically mute people if needed. Um, but I don't know that we could lock it just in case staff is trying to, to get in. Thank you. Let's keep can monitoring. I, so go ahead. Can I check who is three one oh nine three eight three seven six two? That's Susan. I'm sorry, who is this? It's Jason Gonzalez. Rec recording secretary. Ah, thank yes. you. Sorry. <laughs> And we ask counsel to keep your mics uh, on mute un until you're speaking. Just want to make sure to keep the audio quality uninterrupted, please. Thank you. Rob, can you hear me? Just called in from 2550. Dom, that's Danny. Thanks, Danny. Sure. Thank you. 
all those who are on the front lines in this pandemic and pray that no harm comes to them. Let us also pray for those who are currently ill with the virus and those that have lost their lives to it. We pray that as leaders of our community, we have the insight and courage to serve the citizens of Torrance with wisdom and truth. We ask for guidance in making decisions that impact our community, ensuring that they are in the best interest of our city and its citizens. Amen. Thank you. I'll take a report of the city clerk on the posting of the agenda. Your Honor, this agenda was posted on Friday, April 3rd. Thank you. I'll take a motion to waive further reading of resolutions and ordinances after a number of times. So move, so we move to waive further readings. That was Council Councilman Member Chen Griffiths. second. Griffiths. Councilman Chen second. Council Member Chen. Correct. I second. Yes. This is for the vote. Oh. Yes. Council Member Goodrich. Aye. Council Member Griffiths. Yes. Council Member Herring. Yes. Council Member Matucci? Yes. Council Member Rizzo? Yes. Mayor Curie? Yes. Your Honor, that motion carried unanimously. Thank you. I'm sorry I didn't wait for you. Uh, next item is announcement of withdrawn deferred under supplemental items. Yes, Your Honor. This is Leroy Jackson. There are no withdrawn or deferred items. We have a supplemental to you which relates to the oil part of the uh, agenda which will be emails received before the given time. Thank you. Council Committee meetings and announcements. Council Member Goodrich. Yes, Mayor. Today the Citizen Development and Enrichment Committee had a teleconference at 3 p.m. to consider the Thank you. I'd like to adjourn tonight's council meeting in memory of Torrance resident, husband of former councilwoman Hope Witkowski, and friend to the city, Mike Witkowski. Mike lost his battle to pancreatic cancer on March 30th, 2020. He was 80 years old. Mike was born in Los Angeles, California on January 14th, 1940, to parents Rebecca and Irvin. Working hard was instilled in Mike and his brother Ron at an early age. Mike first started working at a donut shop ran by his mother, then a gas station operated by a close family friend. At 16 years old, on a blind date, he met his future wife, Hope. They were married at 19 years old and had two children, Daniel and Deborah. The two recently celebrated six decades of marriage just last November with a big party that included family, friends, and Mike's favorite, an in-and-out truck. Mike was a dedicated husband, father, and very proud papa. He was not only dedicated to his family, but to his clients. As an insurance agent and one of the best in the industry, he fielded calls at any time of the day or night from anyone that needed his help. Later in his career, he entered the field of health insurance and supported seniors with care and compassion to ensure that they had the appropriate plans. He was a diehard Dodger fan and was very involved in his children's sports, frequently serving as manager and also participating in scouts. He was charming, incredibly funny, and was the man behind many memorable roasts. Mike was also his wife's number one fan. While Hope served as a city commissioner and also as a council member, Mike was right there, right by her side, supporting her and her serving the city. Mike passed away peacefully at his home, surrounded by his loved ones. He is survived by his wife, Hope, his daughter, Debbie, and son-in-law, Robert, and their two daughters, Denise and Stacy, his son Danny and his four children, Nicole, Max, Elizabeth, and Ryan, and great-grandchildren, Devin and Chloe. Our thoughts and prayers are with Hope and our entire family during this trying time, and uh, I know we will see each other soon. Uh, I would ask for just one moment of silence in honor of Mike.
Thank you all. That takes us to community matters. 6A, I'll take a number and title, please. Mayor, this is Adam Chaparian. We are going to um, proceed with the presentation update on COVID-19, and then we'll go back to a community matters, if that's okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. With that, I turn over to City Manager Jackson. Mayor and Council and community, I wanted to mention how proud I am of the organization and its efforts to respond to the forest crisis. Uh, as I mentioned last week, this is on top of a second situation that we faced just prior to the emergency involving our, our cyber systems and our info systems. Our organization has stepped up to the bat. They've done a major change in many ways how they do business but they continue to meet the priorities of the community and providing the service as best they can. What we'll walk through tonight is the current status of the city and the efforts that we've had in hand. And then I come back to you, Aram. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. The next uh, several slides uh, provide an uh, overview of the executive orders the city manager has uh, authorized since March 4th when initially the LA County Department of Health declared local emergency. Th these are a recap uh, for the record, uh, all the, the various executive orders, and they are later on in the City Council uh, agenda item uh, 9D. This is just a recap uh, for Mayor and Council. With that, I will now turn over to uh, our Fire Chief, Martin Serna, for his uh, update. Chief Serna. Thank you, Adam. Good evening, Mayor, Council. This is Mark Stern, Fire Chief. I'm just going to provide you a brief overview of some of the items from our last meeting, last Council meeting. You can get to the next slide. So just an update on the Torrance Fire Department and some of the items that we've instituted here. Uh, the first item there is station, station isolation. What we've done is we recognize that to prevent the spread of COVID-19 amongst our first responders, our firefighters, we decided to implement a plan that isolates fire, firefighters in their assigned stations so they're not allowed to work at any other stations uh, during this period of time. I, I recently uh, extended that isolation period out to May 2nd. A part of that isolation period also included canceling of all vacations trades and comp days. This was to ensure that we were able to have the maximum amount of first responders, firefighters, paramedics and, uh, available to the community as we anticipate the peak to happen in the next couple weeks. We also, during this period, established two community ambulance services or, or units. Uh, these are staffed with our fire recruits. This is an opportunity for us to provide a higher level of service to our community. They also have the ability and have been trained up to test our first responders during COVID-19 under the direction of our medical director, Dr. Cohen. We recently, this past Monday, finalized a regional dashboard, which gives us an opportunity to overlook or provide an overview of what's going on across the region. The dashboard gives us an opportunity to look at the capacity of our local hospitals, not only here in Torrance, but across the entire LA Basin to really gauge the strain being placed on all the medical um, services across the board, across our region. It also gives us an opportunity to work in conjunction and look at best practices with our local fire agencies, not only here in Los Angeles, but surrounding counties. We recently, as of just yesterday, completed a citywide video, and the video highlights and provides an overview of the COVID-19, gives a little bit of more detailed information as to what the virus is and the dangers of the virus. It also provides some educational opportunities for our employees on the use of masks or facial coverings. And then finally, we are working with the Los Angeles County uh, Fire Department and exploring opportunities for establishing a community testing site here in Torrance. Next slide. As I shared at our previous 
Council meeting. This is our dashboard, our community dashboard that here folks that focuses here locally on Torrance. This screenshot was taken today at 5 p.m. and it just again provides us an opportunity to kind of gauge where the COVID-19 impacts uh, are and what it looks like. I will just just to show you how quickly this is changing. Uh, this screenshot was just taken two hours ago. Since then, we've had an increase in um, deaths in California by 22, as noted right there in Los Angeles County. And overall cases have exceeded uh, are close to 17,449. Also a part of this uh, dashboard, we have a citywide survey. And it gives us, as a, as a leadership group, a uh, management group, kind of gauge the pulse of the community and determine what sort of messaging and other opportunities we have. And I believe that Ram will touch on some of those uh, programs that we've instituted, instituted based on some of the community feedback. Next slide. As we look forward, um, we want a uh, one month outlook. We really truly want to encourage the community to stay at home. We keep hearing the flatten the curve. We've seen some positive, and it's been reported by not only the federal government, but other um, dashboards and, and our state officials as well as our local officials. We're starting to see just a small trend downwards in the effectiveness of the stay at home orders that have been instituted across our state. We strongly encourage social distancing. As a city, we are ensuring that we have essential operations. We continue our public outreach, which will be shared lately, or which will be shared later in this presentation. We also want to we've established a business support and education task force. There's a lot of opportunities for small businesses, and one of the items that we really are starting to focus in on is the part of recovery. We recognize the impact this will have on our economy, but we want to make sure that we have the tools available and education available for our businesses. We continue to look for opportunities to support our seniors and special needs community or at-risk community. Next slide. We're always looking for best practices and regarding employee health and safety. We're just in our operations on a daily basis to ensure readiness for all our first responders. We're exploring, as I mentioned earlier, offering a drive-up testing uh, for COVID-19 for our senior community over the age of 65. Closely monitoring our personal protective equipment for the supply, not only for our first responders, for our, but for our city. Continuing to maintain constant communication with our local hospitals. They now are part of our EOC and provide daily checks every day at 10 o'clock. And as I mentioned, our goal now is to look at recovery operations to ensure that we can get back to as close to normal business as possible. And at this point, I believe I'll return it over to our EOC director, Adam Chaporian. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Serna. And, and if we have questions, uh, it'll be appropriate to discuss them under item 90 later on in the agenda. This is just a weekly uh, briefing update to the council and the, and the community. Uh, Adam Chaporian, Assistant City Manager. I am also the EOC director for the COVID-19 operation. As mentioned before, our incident management is focused on several goals, including life safety, city stabilization, property and quality of life, and since we started the management of COVID-19, we've added agility, and the most recent is recovery. While we're managing the incident uh, and meeting the needs of our community, we also want to prepare for the eventuality when we resume operations. Um, the EOC operations is a uh, we're in the level two, uh, which is seven days a week operation. We have a Monday through Friday coverage as well as weekend shift. We are providing daily um, department head meetings. Uh, we have a council briefing Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. The EOC meetings are uh, utilizing telephone conference, and they include local hospitals, TUSD, and we're reaching out to areas, private schools, and other learning institutions. The sections initially were management, operations, law, planning, finance, recovery, logistics. We have expanded to include hospitals, schools, care and shelter, employee relations, 
economic development and business support. We want to make sure we, we're, we're a conduit to our business community to share them with the various resources and, and support the city can provide in their recovery efforts. Um, with that, a couple of uh, sites that we recommend the public to visit for additional information include LA County Department of Health. Um, they have a dedicated website. Committee met this afternoon and uh, was presented the design efforts by the uh, Torrance Rosefoot Association for the 2021 Tournament of Roses. Uh, it was through a teleconference with the committee members uh, Griffiths, Matucci, uh, as well as uh, uh, Chairman uh, Goodrich. Uh, also uh, available was the Torrance Rosefoot Association President, Beth Finley, and then members of the public. Uh, I don't know, uh, Councilman Goodrich, did you want to present this report or did you want me to follow through? I can pick it up from there. Thank you, John. Okay. So during the course of our meeting, we discovered that this year's parade theme is Dream, Believe, Achieve. And the winning entry presented by Melanie Perez, she's a student at Torrance High School. She's quite the artist as well, I should say. Her full design is called The Embodiment of Nature, and it depicts endangered animals, including those we may be familiar with, such as the African elephant and those we are less familiar with such as the black-footed ferret. Mr. Tim Estes, president of Fiesta Parade Plus, was very enthusiastic about this design because of its unique interpretation of the theme. Mr. Estes and his team will use this drawing as a basis for a more detailed and polished look design. The city council has already allocated $125,000 in the 2020-2021 fiscal year budget for the float, and the Roosevelt Association contributes $25,000. Mr. Estes, for the fourth year in a row, has committed to holding the price to 150000 Thank you for that. During this afternoon's meeting, the committee concurred with staff's recommendation and approved the conceptual design as the city's float entry into the Pasadena Tournament of Roses Parade on January 1, 2021. The committee is now making a recommendation to the full city council tonight to approve this selection as well. And if approved, staff will return in early June asking for approval to enter into a contract with Fiesta Parade Plus as of July 1st, 2020. Thank you. Is there, are there any questions from uh, council? Seeing none, I'll take a motion to approve the conceptual design for the 2021 vote. Councilman Ted moves to approve the conceptual design for the 2021 rose float. Second, Councilman Herring. Roll call vote, Councilmember Chen. Yes. Councilmember Goodrich. Aye. Councilmember Griffith. Yes. Councilmember Herring. Yes. Councilmember Matucci. Yes. Councilmember Rizzo. Yes. Mayor Curie. Yes. Your Honor, that motion carried unanimously. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is item 9C from the City Attorney's Office to adopt an ordinance amending Torrance Municipal Code sections 11.7.020 and 11.7.030 regarding City Council meetings and adopt resolution that amends the City Council Rules of Order. From uh, our city attorney. Yes, Your Honor. Patrick Sullivan, city attorney. Um, this is an item to bring back uh, the council rules of order um, to do some cleanup and housekeeping, as well as to address uh, the state of emergency, uh, social distancing, and electronic meetings um, that we have now been operating under. Um, as you know, the, the governor had issued his stay at home order in the, um, on uh, the 19th, and the County of Los Angeles filed their safer at home order on the 19th, but then was later modified on the 21st, and that's the applicable order currently. Um, the governor, as you stated earlier in the meeting, had issued an order uh, N-25-20 um, on March 13th that modified um, the Brown Act to allow for meetings via teleconference. Uh, to make them accessible to all members of the public seeking to attend and to address the legislative body to promote social distancing. 
So these uh, amendments uh, to the uh, ordinance and uh, the resolution, which has the actual rules, um, accomplish those goals of both uh, cleanup of some housekeeping issues that we've had in the past, as well as to update the rules to uh, deal with the world that we're operating in today. I'm available for any questions. Oh, and actually, one more thing. There is a typographical error um, in uh, 7.5, subsection 3. Uh, the word appellant there uh, should read the party who has the burden of proof as it does in subsection 1. But other than that, there are no other changes. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Uh, are there any questions from uh, the council? I see none, so I will uh, ask for a uh, motion to concur with the staff recommendation. May I, do we have any members of the public on this item? No, there are no members of the public uh, that I called in. Thank you. Just making sure. Thanks. We did that earlier. This is Katie Wan. That's correct. There's still no callers from the public um, online. I need a motion to concur. And if we can make that as amended for Section 7.5. Move to concur as amended. Stop my hearing. Councilman Ken. Can you give a second? We have a tie there, but I think Councilmember Griffiths was uh, the first one in. He's the second. Thank you, Mayor. Roll call vote. Councilmember Chen? Yes. Councilmember Goodrich? Aye. Councilmember Griffiths? Yes. Councilmember Herring? Yes. Councilmember Matucci? Yes. Councilmember Rizzo? Yes. Mayor Fury? Yes. That motion carried unanimously. Thank you. May we have a number and title, please? Yes, Your Honor. The first is Ordinance Number 3867, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Torrance, California, amending Torrance Municipal Code Sections 11.7.020 and 11.7.030 regarding City Council meetings. Move for the adoption Ordinance Number 3867. Councilman Griffith, second. Roll call vote, Councilmember Chen? Yes. Councilmember Goodrich? Aye. Councilmember Griffiths? Yes. Councilmember Herring? Yes. Councilmember Matucci? Yes. Councilmember Rizzo? Yes. Mayor Fury? Yes. Your Honor, that carried unanimously. Thank you. May we have the next number in title, please? Yes, Your Honor. This is Resolution Number 2020-18, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Torrance, California, adopting amended City Council Rules of Order as City Policy Number 2 as set forth in Torrance Municipal Code Section 11.7.010. Move for the adoption of Resolution Number 2020-18. Councilman Griffith, second. Roll call vote. Councilmember Chen? Yes. Councilmember Goodrich? Aye. Councilmember Griffith? Yes. Councilmember Herring? Yes. Councilmember Matucci? Yes. Councilmember Rizzo? Yes. Mayor Fury? Yes. Your Honor, that motion carried unanimously. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is item 9D. From the city manager, oh, uh, your honor, that will include the uh, uh, summary for publication. That's the way I heard it. Yeah, they did, uh, they did concur with the recommendation. So that would cover it. Thank you. Thank you, Leroy. Thanks for watching us. Next item on the agenda is item 9D. From the city manager and the city attorney, 
ratification and extension of the public orders from STEM. Thank you, Your Honor. This is Leroy Jackson, City Manager. Tonight I'm requesting the City Council to ratify and extend the public order COVID-19 emergency. The emergency has required the City to take a series of actions which have addressed levels of service, closing public counters, canceling public events, canceling public meetings, suspending street sweeping, reducing services, uh, transit services. We've taken these steps in order to maintain as much service as we can. We reached out and utilized our personnel to help our housebound citizens with food serv service deliveries. We worked with the LA County Department of Public Health to allow the reopening of our farmers markets. Our fire department restructured its staffing to increase its emergency response to medical emergency. Both police and fire have taken proactive steps to preserve their availability and to minimize the risk uh, taken uh, uh, to their employees. We have quarantined uh, employees under current guidelines and made them of, uh, of unavailable to first service to allow for the incubation period to pass. Most employees have tested negative and returned to work. Our refuse personnel, field crews, transit personnel continue to seek ways to preserve service to our citizens. Our library personnel, while unable to service Patrons inside the library have utilized the internet to provide educational programming for our community via social media platforms. Their efforts to engage our youth and students is very much appreciated. Many of our personnel are working from home and meeting as you are through telecommunications. I believe the orders before you tonight are consistent with your intentions. However, if not, this process offers the Council an opportunity to review, discuss, and if you feel necessary, modify or set aside these orders or actions. The fire chief and my staff and both department heads are available for questions and to assist you in your deliberation. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Are there any questions from the council? Councilman Griffiths? Go ahead. Mayor may I speak? Councilman Griffiths? Yep. I thought I acknowledged you. Go ahead. Um, I didn't hear. I'm sorry. Um, well, it, it's, my comment is really not directed at any of the resolutions in particular, uh, but I did have a member of the public reach out to me and ask me about the, um, the voluntary requirement of wearing masks. And their comment was, why aren't food preparers required to wear masks? And is that something that has been discussed at any level of government, to your knowledge? Uh, there, are, there are some cities who have discussed it and explored it. It's an option that's available. We have not felt necessary to reach out to uh, make that uh, order at this stage. The council could choose to make that order, though. I'd be interested to hear what my colleagues feel about uh, food uh, preparers wearing or required to wear masks. Anybody else wish to be heard? Council Member Goodrich, I could uh, I could go for that. This is Councilman Chen. Yeah, good, Council Member Chen. Yeah. I feel there are a lot of food preparers who are already voluntarily putting a uh, protective mask on of various types, uh, I, and neutral uh, if we need to make an enforcement of them doing it. Uh, this is how I feel right at this moment. I kind of agree with uh, you, Council Member. Uh, there's a, one of our neighboring cities has just uh, voted today to make it mandatory for all people when in public to be wearing masks. And I would certainly hope uh, I wear my mask when I'm out in public. And I certainly, I, I know my colleagues are, are doing the same thing. I think maybe sometimes if we lead by example, uh, perhaps people will take us up on it. Uh, certainly the news media is getting that information out to people. And we're going to be coming back in a week. And, uh, 
uh, Council Member Griffith, I think uh, we should be looking at this and see how it rolls out this week and uh, take action, uh, maybe even stronger than what you're uh, what you were talking about, just the food service, because uh, uh, this is a really important thing. But people have to know not to use the uh, N95 masks. That's the ones that are reserved for first responders and medical professionals, uh, even the surgical masks. But uh, the recommendation that we're getting for people uh, who are just out and about is just to have something covering your mouth so that you protect yourself and protect the, the rest of the community. So uh, uh, I think I'd like to see perhaps we come back next week and discuss this. Anybody else? On any well, but why don't we make the recommendation that, that we bring it back as an agenda item for an actual vote uh, as a separate agenda item then if my colleagues would concur. Because I think that preparing food, when, when you order food to take out or something like that, I think we'd all like to have the confidence to know that it was made in a, a proper environment. Uh, if someone doesn't wear a mask and has a potential is, is, uh, is sick and, and there's uh, microbes come out of the mouth and land in the food, that food will, will allow that virus to live for some period of time. And the unsuspecting public who eats that food then may uh, be uh, at risk. So I, I think it's something we should consider. Mayor, this is the City Attorney Patrick Sullivan, if I may. Um, another option might be also for Councilman Griffiths is you may want to uh, direct staff of the city manager to look into um, various uh, things along that continuum, whether it's uh, facial coverings for food service workers or facial coverings for everyone out in public. Um, one of the things we, we also would have to define, um, which would probably make it difficult to do tonight, um, is what do we mean by a mask or a facial covering um, since there are shortages and so that's something that we could uh, or council could uh, direct the city council uh, the city manager to look into and possibly explore either for an item to bring back or for him to issue an order for council then to come back and ratify later. Council Member Griffith, how's that sound? That sounds fine. I, it's not my intent to uh, impose this on the public as a requirement just for food servers or food preparers. Uh, and I think that that's an area where people need to have confidence that they're getting food that uh, has been prepared in the best possible way to prevent any transmission of illness. May I also in the intervening period of time, this is Lua Johnson again. We certainly can. Uh, go out and communicate that to our, our food serving areas and grocery stores and encourage them towards that direction. And if necessary, order it if, if uh, matters become more critical during the week or to return with just next week for your consideration. Mayor? That'd be great for me. Thank you. Councilman Rizzo here. Yes, sir. Councilmember Rizzo. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, we're going to have staff take a look at it. Uh, I've also uh, asked staff to circle back with the uh, LA County Health Department um, and see what uh, their input is on that. Um, you know, as I've been out and about uh, my daily daily foraging uh, expeditions, um, that I have noticed that uh, many of the grocery store workers they are wearing masks, they're wearing gloves, uh, they're maintaining the six feet, they're sanitizing. Uh, so we're seeing a lot of uh, voluntary compliance with this. Uh, I don't want to try and get to the point where we're actually starting to uh, mandate and trying to get in any type of enforcement actions on this. Uh, but uh, I do think we need to uh, circle back with LA County Health. Um, if uh, that's something that is agreeable to them, that might be an order that uh, they would want to issue um, in reference to uh, food servers. So, just my comments on it. Thank you. Councilmember Batucci, did you have some comments? Uh, yes, Mayor. Uh, because time is of the essence and something like this, I would I would uh, probably recommend that we we can add it to tonight's uh, resolution. Uh, I don't know if that's even uh, feasible, uh, but I think do, food service, I think, should be uh, uh, covering their mouths uh, with some sort of uh, uh, mask. Contraption it doesn't have to be anything uh, special, but I think I think most people are. Uh, but I have I have picked up food at places that aren't doing it. And uh, quite honestly, I think if we wait till next week, um, 
you know, this is something that we probably should take action tonight if, if even legally possible. Thank you. Uh, this is again Patrick Sullivan, the city attorney. Um, the only issue uh, with taking issue tonight, uh, I mean taking action tonight, is the council's action is ratifying the previous order um, or orders issued by Leroy Jackson, uh, the city manager, as the uh, director of emergency services. And so um, I'm not sure, since it's just a ratification, if that would be um, within uh, the, the Brown Act on that issue. Um, but like I said, a, another option would be to give direction to uh, the city manager to look into either bringing it back to council for next week or looking into uh, what other agencies and other uh, health departments uh, here in LA County and uh, throughout the state have done. Um, and possibly he could then determine to issue his own order, which also could be brought back to you um, uh, next week as well. So either or would be the option there of either bringing back an item for you for next week or having him look into possibly issuing an order uh, on food workers himself that they can be brought back to you for ratification. Uh, it's Councilman Purpose again. Uh, you joined, go ahead, Mayor. Well, I just, uh, uh, what the city attorney said was fine. I think obviously the city manager has the capacity to make that order at any time. And uh, as Councilman Matucci said, I think time is a lesson in this regard. And, I think we'd all like the uh, knowledge and comfort to know that our food servers have been required to wear masks in the preparation of the food that we eat. And uh, I think there are public that make easier at night. So if the city manager would like to make that uh, order at the recommendation of council, uh, I know it's not really pertaining to this particular agenda item, but it's on topic. Uh, that would be a perfectly acceptable solution as opposed to waiting for a full week. And that is within the power of the city manager. So, uh, uh, Mr. Jackson, you have heard the uh, council, and uh, we we'll expect to uh, talk about this again next week and see what occurred. And in the, in the interim, uh, as Councilman Russo pointed out, uh, we would want to check with the public health. Uh, the discussions I heard from uh, the, the Los Angeles County Department of Public Health seems like they may be going to mandatory masks. Uh, uh, out and about, so uh, it, it may be something that may be moved by next Tuesday. You can try to allow it. I just quickly on that. And otherwise, I can submit a question to the council to set up and date appropriate last. Thank you. I think we all appreciate that. Any other questions, comments? Um, has anybody called into the call center on item 9B? That's in David. Mayor, this is Katie Wanda. I do not see any callers on the line. Okay. Uh, having no more discussion by the council and nobody from the public wishing to call in on this, uh, I'll take the uh, a motion to concur with the staff recommendation and approve the ordinance summary for publication. Actually, these are uh, ratifying, uh, resolutions ratifying the uh, public orders and administrative orders. This is Katie Watt. I'm sorry for interrupting, Mayor. Um, I understand that we do have a call that is currently being transferred. If you don't mind holding for a moment, please. No, you can hold. Thank you, Mayor. I will pass the caller in as soon as she becomes available. Jackson, you are on the line for item 9B. Can you please start speaking? I wanted to talk about the mask. Okay, maybe that's me. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Go ahead. Hello? Go ahead, ma'am. We're waiting. Oh, okay. Um, I just wanted to comment on that they're talking about at the moment. I don't think it should go till next week. 
I think the need is right now as we're attaching the urge, the, the because of how, oh, I love Siaka, I can't hear. <laughs> okay. If people are going out and about, which they shouldn't be, even if they just pull their shirt up over their mouth and nose, at least they're covered. If you want to call it a mask, that's fine. If you want to just call it a covering. But I think they all should do that. Even if they don't want to make it final tonight, at least the city manager should give a temporary, I say, if he can. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, I think we all agree with you, uh, and uh, I certainly agree with you. I do that, and, and I'm, I'm certain you do as well. And... Uh, uh, we're giving direction to the city manager to uh, um, to act on it without coming back to us in advance. So uh, he has the power to do that if it's if it's deemed necessary. But we're going to be checking with the uh, Department of Public Health or Los Angeles County to see what their thoughts are on this as well. Uh, the question that was brought up by Councilmember Griffiths was for food service and food preparers, not basically everybody out in the community. So. Uh, uh, we'll look at all of, all of the aspects of uh, masking as well as uh, face covering as, as opposed to masking. Okay? Okie dokie. Well, I'm sure it will eventually work. Thank you very much for your input. We appreciate you calling in. Thank you. Right. Thank you, caller. I am disconnecting that caller now, Mayor. And I do not see anyone else on the line as it stands. Okay. And uh, we said that we we're looking for the to adopt uh, ratification and extension of the public orders. This is Councilman Chen. I move to concur the ratification and extension of public orders. Councilman Griffith, second. Welcome, Council Member Chen. Councilman Griffith, second.
a resolution of the City Council of the City of Torrance, California, ratifying Public Order Number 2020-5, closing Torrance Beach, Torrance Beach parking lot, the portion of the strand within the City of Torrance's jurisdiction, Miramar Park, and Riviera Beach Colony parking lot. And the last resolution. The last resolution, Your Honor, is Resolution Number 2020-23, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Torrance, California, ratifying administrative orders issued by the City Manager acting as the Director of Emergency Services between March 12, 2020 and March 27, 2020. This is Councilman Chen that moves to adopt resolutions 2020-19 through 2020-23. Council Member Gibbons, second. Roll call vote, Council Member Chen. Yes. Council Member Goodrich. Aye. Council Member Griffith. Yes. Council Member Hinton. Yes. Council Member Matucci? Yes. Council Member Rizzo? Yes. Mayor Fury? Yes. Your Honor, that motion carried unanimously. Thank you. The next item on the agenda, well, let's go down. 10 is hearing, there's none scheduled. Number 11, agency agenda, there's none scheduled. Number 12 is our second reading ordinances, there's none scheduled which takes us to number 13, which is oral communication. Oral communications, this portion of the meeting is reserved for comment on items not on the agenda. Under the Ralph M. Brown Act, City Council cannot act on items raised during public comment, but may respond briefly to statements made or questions posed, request clarification, or refer the item to staff. Speakers under oral communication will have no longer than three minutes per speaker. Uh, do we have any uh, members of the public who have called in for uh, public comment? Thank before you. I go there, I, we, did receive, uh, we did receive four email communications for oral communications, and they have been uh, provided to all of the members of the council, and they are part of the record for this evening. Now, back to the call center. Hi, Mayor. This is Katie Wong. At the current moment, um, I believe that the calls are being transferred in. If you don't mind holding for a moment, please. We're waiting. Great. Thank you. Caller Margaret O'Regan, if you can please start speaking, your three minutes will begin. Thank you. I would like to thank the Torrance City Council, the city manager, all the city employees, including fire and police, uh, for guiding us through this Alfred Hitchcock-type Hitchcock pandemic and for dealing with the computer technical problems we're having, uh, and also the cooperation of the citizens. Uh, Torrance has been doing the best they can through these unusual circumstances. I have one suggestion. Since we're all stuck at home, could the Torrance City Cable please put on half hour little easy walk videos so it doesn't matter if you're a senior citizen like me or a kid home from school, for one half hour we can do a Leslie Sansom or something walking exercise. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Margaret. Caller, 
Yes, Mayor. Caller Betty Hayes, you are now unmuted. Hello, this is Debbie Hayes, and I just wanted to thank everyone in the city who is doing a fabulous, fabulous, fabulous job to lead us through uncharted waters. You step up to every challenge like you've done it before, especially at the farmer's market. Oh, my gosh. But every one of you um, has carried a burden that's unbelievable, and you – hello, this is Debbie Hayes. And I just wanted to thank every single one of you for stepping up to the plate during these challenging times. The entire city is doing an absolutely fabulous job of rocking of rocking this situation. And I also wanted to thank the first responders out there. I'm talking police fire, UPS workers, grocery store employees, hospital heroes, etc. And I'm sorry, I think I'm repeating myself because this is kind of a new situation. But keep up the good work and know that we've got your back out here. And my motto of this month is better six feet apart than six feet under. So let's hashtag stay at home. Thank you, Debbie. We appreciate the kind words and all your efforts as well. Anybody else? Mayor, this is Katie Wand. At this time, I do not see any callers on the line. Okay. If there's no other callers, then we'll bring it up to the city council. And uh, the order that I have is uh, Council Member Rizzo. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, just again uh, to reiterate uh, from the last caller, uh, everybody, you know, stay home, uh, remain calm. Uh, we're going to get this through this together as a community. And uh, like our little motto, I think that's kind of neat. Better than better be six feet apart than six feet under. Um, those are. Those are pretty good words to, to adhere to. Um, so uh, as, as anybody can, uh, you know, wear your mask. I've, I've got my mask right here, and I'll be wearing this as soon as I uh, finish up and leave the room. So, uh, again, stay safe. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember. Uh, Councilmember Ken? Thank you, Mayor. I, too, want to encourage our residents to continue with COVID-19. Best practices. Stay safe and to remember the good hygiene practices we're learning now so that when this is over, we continue to practice good personal hygiene. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Goodrich. Yes, yeah, so I'd just like to uh, thank staff for the extra hours they're putting in and uh, the, the Cares to Go program is uh, really proven to be uh, a success, and I, I know the residents appreciate it. And uh, finally, especially the staff at the farmer's market, if, uh, if our management staff could pass on my personal thanks to the frontline staff that are working that. Uh, pretty impressive that some uh, heavy hitters like Santa Monica and L.A., they have to come to see how it's done down here in Torrance because uh, we're, we're a model for the rest of the cities, and we're doing it right, right off the bat and providing a vital service to residents and taking some burden off of uh, the grocery stores and they seem to have lines. So um, fantastic job on that. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Griffith. Thank you, Mayor. I wanted to just take a moment to my, say that my heart goes out to everyone who's had any difficulties through this process, whether it's financial, or uh, health-wise, I, I know certainly financially there's been a huge burden to many, many people, businesses, and personal issues. There are many resources available to businesses and to um, individuals to help you recover financially, and I hope you'll take advantage of the many resources that are available on our uh, website, torrentca.com, 
through the federal government and the state and local governments that have also uh, prepared many different uh, packages to assist with uh, people's uh, financial needs. Uh, so please reach out to those. But in that same spirit, we also have to be looking at the damage that this is causing our city. And with the concurrence of my colleagues, I'd like to have staff prepare an item uh, for council's consideration to look at uh, issues related to uh, tightening up our budget, potential budget cut, and or hiring freeze of non-essential personnel uh, that we should be discussing uh, sooner rather than later. How do I get concurrence? Councilman, we can say this is what I got. We are in the process of assessing our financial situation. We will be coming forward to you fairly quickly with, with strategies to deal with the shortfall on revenues that we're seeing at the present time and giving you ideas and structuring going forward for the end of this year plus uh, preparation for the budget for next year. So in other words, it's in the work. In the works, it will be coming to you. Uh, but we have the same concern. This is not something that sits around. We have to move on it very quickly. We should be bringing it forward to you very shortly. Yeah, I just want to make sure the council has the opportunity to weigh in on that. And I would value to hear my uh, colleagues' opinions and concerns about uh, where we are with our budget and the steps that we should be taking to uh, make sure that we're in the best possible position. Anything else? Oh, that's it for me for now. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Herring. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I, too, would like to uh, commend um, our city manager, Leroy Jackson, for his swift, bold, and decisive leadership uh, in acting on these public orders uh, to keep our community safe and protected. Um, early on, out the gate, uh, I know in February, uh, he was making some real hard, tough uh, decisions, uh, and, um, and and it has served us well. So I want to uh, commend the city manager for, for his leadership. Uh, and just thank our, our staff. Uh, I mean, our staff is um, um, some elite professionals um, uh, that has a, that uh, old army get it done attitude uh, mindset, uh, been working very hard um, day in and day out. Uh, around the clock uh, for our city, and I know that we always talk about our first responders, and I do thank our fire department, our police uh, force, but also uh, those who work in community service um, uh, out in the public um, uh, sector, uh, uh, our housekeeping engineer that's keeping us clean and safe, uh, people that's behind the scenes that you don't see. Um, just want to really say, say thank you, thank you, thank you to, to all, all, the, all of our staff. and. And that's been said uh, to our community for, for responding. Um, like what Debbie Hayes says, it's better to be uh, uh, six feet apart than, than six feet under. I think that that's, that's, that's a very good saying. Uh, and then lastly, uh, the, uh, the Torrance Cares to Go Grocery Delivery Program. I think that is an excellent way of serving our community and keeping our employees engaged. And uh, from what I'm hearing, you're doing a fantastic job. So thank you again. Thank you, Councilmember. Uh, Councilmember Matucci. Thank you, Mayor. I, too, want to congratulate, uh, really, just staff for putting this uh, meeting together. It, it looks like we're almost getting the hang of it. Um, I'd like to uh, also concur with uh, Griffith's uh, con concerns uh, about, you know, budget shortfalls and what we might be experiencing in the near future. Uh, I really do think uh, some of the hardest hits we may get probably within the next uh, three to six months, uh, at least financially. But uh, we do need to take a proactive approach looking into what we need to do to really not just stay afloat, but uh, to be responsible uh, fiscally. Uh, I think there's going to be a, a lot of hard decisions we may have to make in the near future. And uh, I just hope that we uh, jump on it sooner than later instead of scrabbling around uh, later on. So. But uh, anyways, uh, thanks again to, for really just for everyone involved uh, here at City Hall and 
and all the employees that I see working out on out on the streets and stuff. I mean, it's it's really amazing how even during these uh, these hard times we still are able to run the city uh, properly or at least you know functional. So, anyways, that's all I got. God bless you guys. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I agree with everybody. Uh, there's going to be some hard decisions made in the next two, three, four, six months, maybe a year from now. Uh, it's what we have incurred with uh, uh, the uh, coronavirus and what it's brought to us economically and, and actually health-wise to some members of our community. Uh, everybody's asked to put a mask on when they're out and about. Uh, you know, how many times do you have to tell somebody to do it? Uh, uh, but now we're seeing much more compliance. More people are doing it, and uh, that makes everybody that much safer. And as I mentioned at the outset, uh, everybody's talking about uh, straightening out the, the curve. And, uh, you know, if our city is any indication of it, if our residents and our businesses are any indication of the cooperation throughout the state of California, then, I, you know, I think we're in, in a, as best the situation as we possibly could be at this point in time. Uh, it was brought up to me today, a, a young lady uh, sent me a, an email, and uh, one of those things is that, you know, ironically, we have less traffic now. Uh, that's always been one of our biggest complaints from our, our public, is traffic is really bad. Now we have less traffic, and unfortunately, that has caused people to be, to be speeding and actually driving erratically. We've had some really colossal uh, traffic collisions in the last few weeks uh, based upon, I guess, that uh, people are just thinking they can get places a lot faster. So I would ask everybody, just you know, take your time getting where you're going. Uh, without the traffic there, you can still drive safely. You don't have to drive rapidly. So as we close tonight's agenda, I want to thank our citizens for all you are doing and, and your perseverance. Please help us to assist those in our community who need our help during these difficult times. Our seniors, our businesses, our restaurants, hospitals are amongst many groups that need our help. Please order from our local restaurants for the takeout and delivery. This will help them greatly to survive and continue to serve our community after this emergency is over. As I've stated before, there are no shortages in our food and supplies, so please only shop if necessary, but reasonably, too. Hoarding is actually counterproductive and hurts individuals in need for essential supplies. Please wear a face covering when in public. Keep social distancing. And it's not limited to six foot. You can go eight foot or ten foot or twelve foot away from people. The, 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 the further the better, actually. And stay indoors as much as possible. Wave hello at a distance when you're, you greet your neighbors and rejoice in the resilience of who we are. Be safe and take care. And the last one I want to say is a happy birthday to my son. It was his 40th birthday today. And Terry and I took a ride out there to see he and his four children and his wife. And we celebrated his birthday from about 12 foot away. And it hurt really hard that we couldn't hug our grandchildren. We couldn't hug and kiss our, our son or his wife. But we did because that's what we have to do right now. And I encourage everybody to just really reflect on how important it is. Someone told me that in the greatest generation, we uh, took all of our young men and sent them off to war, in continents far away, and they risked their lives. And now we're being asked to stay home. Turn on your television. Watch your Netflix. Uh, you know, when you think about everything all together, uh, it's really not as bad as it could be. And if we all cooperate, it will not be as bad as it could be. And that's the most important thing. God bless you all. Mr. Jackson, anything from city staff? No, Your Honor, again, an appreciation to the council for working with us for this meeting. Thank you to the citizens for understanding the difficulties we're having in conducting meetings in this way and this process. Thank you so much to all the staff to Info Systems and the others for working to put this on as we have this time. And as mentioned, this is a work in process. Hopefully next Tuesday we'll have be even better at it than we are today. And hopefully we won't have to be better at this over a long period of time. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
thank you very much. And again, thank you to our entire staff and every employee that works for the city of Torrance and all the residents and all the businesses and all those people who uh, are employees here. Uh, we understand that it's difficult, and it's difficult for absolutely everybody. And, but the better we all cooperate, the sooner we'll be through this. I'll take a motion to adjourn. Mayor, I move to adjourn uh, following the recommendation of the city manager that city council adjourn tonight's city council meeting to Tuesday, April 14, 2020, for the regular meeting commencing at 7 p.m. in compliance with Governor Newsom's executive order N2920, which suspended portions of the Brown Act. Members of the Torrance City Council and staff will need to learn how to put a period in a sentence here. <laughs> City Council and staff will participate in this meeting electronically and via telephone in our continuing effort to practice social distancing to reduce the spread of COVID-19. Members of the public are encouraged to watch the meeting via City Cable Channel 3, Spectrum, and Channel 31, Frontier. Over the air on 25.2, streaming on TorrenceCA.gov, Facebook at TorrenceCA, and Instagram Live at City of Torrance CA. Councilman Griffith, second as amended. Roll call vote. Council Member Chen. Yes. Council Member Goodrich. Aye. Council Member Griffith. Yes. Council Member Herring. Yes. Council Member Matucci. Yes. Council Member Rizzo. Yes. And Mayor Fury. Yes. Your Honor, that motion carried unanimously. Thank you. Good night, everyone. We'll see you next week.